Okie dokie, artichoke. Hello, welcome back to another episode of Full Steam Ahead. This is science, technology, engineering, art, and math crafts for kids, and I'm Sam. We are filming at home today. I will be back in the library for the next two episodes though, so don't fear, it will be your familiar situation soon. So for today, we are going to be focusing on, as the title says, growing our own stalactites and stalagmites. Very exciting. So what's the difference between a stalactite and a stalagmite? Uh, I always forget. Stalactites grow down from the ceiling and stalagmites grow up from the ground. So we will be putting together an experiment that grows them both at the same time. Very exciting. All right, so materials for this experiment. A couple are optional. You are going to need some yarn. Uh, a natural fiber is best because it's more porous and it will help our solution travel along the length of your yarn and help it form crystals and grow those stalactites and stalagmites easier. So I just have here a 100% wool undyed yarn. You can see my little uh, ball winder here. I'm a knitter. I happen to have a lot of yarn lying around. If you don't, you can use acrylic. It just won't work quite as well, but it'll still work. So, um, a ball of yarn, you need about two meters per experiment. That's not a hard figure though. Cut however much you need. Um, and I say undyed because if you want to add in food coloring and test out how your color or your crystals look when you grow them different colors, um, an undyed yarn will not bleed into your crystals and muddy up the color. So if you want to use food coloring for this, I would prefer an undyed or white yarn. All right, you're also going to need a plate, two plates if you're going to do two as I'm doing today which reminds me I'm gonna need to grab a second plate at some point. Some scissors, some paper clips, two per experiment. They need to be the big ones because they're gonna be weighing down our yarn so it doesn't come flying out. Um, two jars or some kind of container that will hold a fair amount of liquid per experiment. So I'll be doing two and I'll explain why in a minute. And then basics for this one is baking soda. Uh, we've already made crystals with borax and we've made crystals with salt, so now we are going to grow our own stalactites and stalagmites with baking soda, um, but you can substitute salt or borax or sugar if you don't have baking soda. Or what I'm going to do today is you can make this into a more thorough, well-rounded experiment by testing out what kinds of stalactites and stalagmites grow based on what medium you're using to create your solution. So I'm going to do one experiment with sugar and one with baking soda and after they're finished growing and while they're growing I'm going to take note of what is the same and what is different about them and make some guesses as to why. So uh, this craft for today is probably going to be best for the slightly older crowd of children uh, because it takes a week for these crystals to form. <laughs> so. Uh, it's not an instant gratification experiment. You have to keep an eye on it for a minimum of a week to really get a good idea of how your crystals are growing. So, for that reason, I recommend it for the older kiddos who have a, a longer attention span and won't get bored of checking on their crystals after a day. So, that's why. So those are all the materials we're going to need. Let's go ahead and get started. Oh, and you're also going to need some hot water. So I have already boiled some water about 10 minutes ago, so it's nice and warm, but it's not too hot, um, and a stirring implement, and you're gonna need a stirring implement. So I'm gonna go grab my hot water and an extra plate and a stirring implement, and I will be right back. so we can make our solution. So now what you have to do, just like when we made our own geodes with the borax, you have to create a really saturated solution. The more saturated, the better. What that means is your water will be so full of the baking soda that it will not collect any more inside of the water molecule and it does not disintegrate. So what we're gonna do is in each of our jars, I think we 
we are going to pour some warm, not boiling water. You do not want to pour boiling water into glass. All right, I'm gonna do one at a time so my water doesn't cool too much. And then I'm just gonna start pouring in baking soda. And when it stops dissolving, I'll know that it's fully saturated. So, let's just get started. Come on, come out. Oh, baking soda always gets so chunky. Okay. You need more than you think you need, almost always, when you're saturating, creating a saturated solution. At least with salts. That's still dissolving. Yep. Okay, so let's put some more in there. I'm not using measurements for this because based on how much water you use, it's and if your tap water is hard or soft or if you're using filtered water, it's gonna take a different amount of baking soda to create a saturated solution. So that's why I'm not giving measurements. So just kind of eyeball it. You'll know it's fully saturated when it doesn't dissolve anymore. Um, and you want it to be really, really saturated for this experiment because um, the more saturated it is, the uh, more your crystals will grow and the less excess water will collect in your plate. I'll get there in a second. You'll see what I mean in a second. Um, and the less you'll have to dump back into the jar uh, because if you have to dump the excess water back into the jar a lot, it will um, mess with your solution and it won't be as saturated and you'll have to add more and more and more baking soda. So. There we go, that is nice and saturated, so let's do the next one. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of tape on these two and mark them as baking soda, so I know that these ones are my baking soda solution. And then I will do the same and mark it with sugar for my sugar solution, so I know which one is which when I'm keeping an eye on them. Did not pour enough in that one, I can already tell. Okay. And if you've got really young ones that want to participate in this, it can be really fun for them just to add the baking soda and the sugar to the water and stir it, particularly the baking soda, uh, because we have pretty soft water here, so when we add it into the water, the baking soda fizzes up a little bit, so that's kind of fun for them to, to stir that in as well. Baking soda down! I just lost a chunk, it jumped. Oh well. Okay. I don't know if you can see, but I can tell this one is fully saturated because I've got baking soda lining the bottom here. It is not dissolving no matter how much I stir it. This one is still dissolving. Wow, the fattest squirrel I've ever seen just walked by on my fence. Ah, it's a really big squirrel. This kid, they collected all the nuts. Okay. There we go. So those are nice and saturated. So now really quickly, to take some tape. I have pink washi tape because uh, as I've said many times I love pink. Pink is my favorite color. So I'm just gonna put some tape on there and I'm gonna mark it with BS <laughs> bicarbonate soda. <laughs> Baking soda. That's why I'm putting BS. Okay so let's go ahead and do that on the other one and then we will make our solution with sugar. We are about halfway done. I promise this one does not take long. Although if you wanna do one with sugar, one with borax, one with baking soda, and one with salt, it will of course take a little bit longer, but you'll also have way more fun the more you do. All right, so I'm gonna add water into those. Yay, I boiled just enough, that's exciting. And now I'm gonna do my sugar. Try four first. Four teaspoons. Heap in big honking teaspoons. Make sure you either use a separate stirring implement or wipe off your first one so that you are not contaminating your sugar solution with baking soda because that would ruin the experiment. Okay, so that was not enough sugar. 
already tell, at least in this one, it's already dissolved completely and I didn't even stir it. Oh, I didn't put any in that one, that's why. <laughs> Can you guys tell I took a week off? I just got so confused. Why isn't there any sugar in there? Because I only put it in one jar. All right, so let's do a couple more. Because that one dissolved really quickly. don't want to waste your sugar on an experiment like this, I totally understand, totally understand, but it is very fun, especially with little kids, to uh, add some more to test out what the reactions are with different solutions and see what kind of stalactites and stalagmites you can grow. Maybe I should just dump the whole thing in. Okay, I can see crystals floating around in there. Okie dokie, so let's do one, two, three, four, five, I think it might have been six. Let's try six and see how that goes. Okay. Nope. Seven. Eight. Are there still crystals floating around in this one? They've dissolved. Okay, let's do two more. Nine, ten in each one. Nine, ten. Oh, why did I do that? All right, pull that back out and let's cap it at that. been enough because I can see sugar crystals floating around in there still. All right, cool. So we now have our saturated baking soda and sugar solutions. Let me go ahead and... Hi, pistachio. Hi, honey. My kitty is down here. Does anybody want to say hello? All right, so let's go ahead and mark our sugar jar. I guess I only need to do one since it's going <laughs> to... Sugar. Okay, so now for setup, I'm gonna put the sugar one right here. And I'm gonna put the baking soda one right here so that you can see. Okay, so we have our two jars of solution on either side of a plate in the middle, baking soda and sugar. You're gonna to wanna to put this out of the way so that no little kiddos come over and try to drink your baking soda water. The sugar one will taste great. The baking soda one will not taste good. And now we're going to cut our yarn. All right, so I already cut one, so I did about two arms length. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it in half and then fold it in half again, just so I can make a nice thick yarn that is a nice good cable so it's got lots of air pockets inside there from the twisting and from the four lengths of yarn so that the solution will travel along it and then I just twisted it so that it if I went like this it would roll together but I'm not gonna let it do that and now what I'm gonna do is dunk one end or not dunk one end put one end through a paper clip or rather put the paper clip through one end slide it through one of the prongs like that and now I'm going to dunk this oops put the other one sorry put the uh, paper clip on the other end as well and then hold the two paper clip ends and go ahead and dunk it in your solution you don't have to do this but it's gonna kind of kick start the opposite end. You might have to push it down in there a little bit. 
kickstart the formation of the crystals if you saturate your yarn ahead of time. There we go. Let it drip out a bit so it's not a huge mess. And then what we're going to do is over our plate, we're going to go ahead and drop one side in and then drop the other side in. And there we go. You want them to have a little droop in the middle and you want the ends of your yarn to be as far down in the solution as you can because this is going to sit here for a week. So over time that water is going to evaporate and as it does you're going to have to add more solution. Make sure it's not just water like I said earlier. As it evaporates add more solution and it needs to be the fully saturated solution. Um, but the further down you drop it the less you have to worry about adding more water. As long as it's still soaking up the solution you're good. If it gets to a point where your yarn is no longer dipped in the solution that's when you add more. So. Now we have our baking soda one done. Let's go ahead and get our sugar one in. So about two lengths of yarn, two arm span lengths. There we go, dump this out of the way. And let's go ahead and fold it in half, fold it in half again. Oops, I don't know my own strength. Just kidding, I just almost ripped it out of my own hand. Twirl it, twirl it, twirl it to make a nice porous cord. Okay, attach paper clip to one side and attach paper clip to other side. I just go ahead and for one, I slide it in the middle of the, like the two loops from the yarn. And then for the other one, I slide the yarn in between the paper clip so it kind of clips it shut because this is the side that has the open yarn. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to dunk it in the sugar solution side that I used to stir the sugar this time. Get it nice and saturated. Again this step is optional but it does kind of speed the process along so if you've got younger kids participating in their big brother or big sister or, or big friend's um, experiment then this can be something to kind of help kickstart it so they don't get too bored while they wait for a week. Let it drip the excess for a second and then over the plate, let's go ahead and drop in one side of our yarn. There we go. And the other side of our yarn. And now we wait. Um, just in case anyone was curious, this dip uh, that is formed when you have um, a length of something drooped between two weights is called a catenary. I found that out today, isn't that exciting? Okay, so now we wait. Uh, you're gonna just leave them like this. Oh, and if you wanna add food coloring to make your stalactites and stalagmites colorful, you can go ahead and add that now um, or just before you put in the yarn with the weighted paper clips on the end. Um, if you wanna make this even more fun, doing additional experiments with sugar and borax and baking soda, uh, and whatnot. You can also try doing one color in one jar and another color in another jar and see how those two colors meet and what happens to the stalagmites and stalactites when they form with the two colors from either side. But otherwise, now we wait. So uh, your crystals should start forming along the length of your yarn within two to three days, depending on how warm your house is and how much the water is evaporating. Um, and also how saturated your solution is. So if you fully saturated it, your crystal should form a little bit more quickly. Um, and then within a week, you should have a stalactite formed and it should have had really good downward growth and started forming a stalagmite up from the bottom as well. As the, as the solution drips down, it'll form from the bottom up and um, there will also be within a week one forming top down. So anyway, that is today's experiment. Um, I know it took a bit to get us to this point and I know that a week is kind of a long time to wait, but I'm going to keep these right here. I'm going to move my table off to the side and I will show you pictures of how my stalactites and stalagmites are growing uh, as the week progresses and I hope that you do the same at home. If you do, please do take pictures and tag Mendel Library on Instagram. I would love to see what your experiments look like especially if you use color, but it's not necessary. 
Um, and then we will see what the differences are between the baking soda and the sugar solution as we go. So I hope you had a good time uh, watching me put this together today. And I hope you got some good ideas for science experiments you can do while we all shelter in place and homeschool and learn from home and all that jazz. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful day. If you're interested, I will be doing uh, toddler story time at 1030 on Friday. So 1030 in the morning here on Facebook. So if you've got a toddler at home that wants to sing along and read along and play the ukulele with me, uh, go ahead and tune in at 1030 on Friday. Otherwise, I will see you guys next Friday. We will be doing a craft inspired by uh, fall and apple trees next week. Uh, we will be making pine cone apple trees. So I will see you for next week's episode, uh, Wednesdays at 3 o'clock. Have a wonderful day, okay, everybody? I'll see you next time. Bye.